Good morning everyone, I'm on a vacation right now in Greece, but it's hard for me to let go of my projects completely. Even though life here can be described as quite enjoyable, my mind somehow keeps going back to coding and the features and the fixes that I want to make. So I got up early this morning, and I think I have about an hour or two before my baby daughter wakes up and I want to do some coding and code review. Let's discuss today's agenda. And I will start with a confession. I broke production two days ago by asking Claude to make a small change to my app. So first we'll take a look at what went wrong and what I could have done better. Secondly, I wanted to show, in a completely self-indulgent way, how I implemented a feature I thought about for a couple of days for the window manager aspect of my app. And finally, since I am finding myself implementing a lot of new features lately and also fixing some bugs, I wanted to add a changelog to my website so that it's easier to communicate exactly what is going on. So let's get started with how I broke production. For a bit of context, some of my viewers know that I have traditionally been a skeptic when it comes to AI and vibe coding, and I've been pretty vocal about it. But I did give myself a challenge to come up with some use for AI, and in my spare time I've been working on a new app that can, in contrast to all of my other projects, be described as AI maximalist, in the sense that I'm not only using AI for coding, but the app itself is also powered by it. And I'm not yet ready to share what it is, but for now I will just say that it's not displacing or replacing any humans, and it's also a lot of fun to use. I did find a modicum of success with vibe coding lately, so I thought to myself, hey, why not try and vibe code a feature in my existing project? You know, the one used by more than 10,000 people daily. And this brings us to breaking production. So what exactly went wrong? Some of you know that my app One Menu has a clipboard history feature. And I know macOS is coming out with a native implementation of this, but anyhow, I just wanted to make a small improvement judging by how I use it myself. I noticed that when I use the clipboard history most of the time it's because I want to paste something as plain text. And so I added a new keyboard shortcut to my app that allows me to perform a paste as plain text action on the most recent item without having to open the clipboard history window. So I opened up cursor and at the same time I opened up the Pandora's box. But it did almost everything correctly except for one hard to spot change. But since the new keyboard shortcut worked when I tested, and because this feature needed a bit more polish then I decided to commit and release it as part of a new version in the future. But the future came, and in this future I was greeted with a few emails from upset users about the broken clipboard history. So I dug through the code and I found that Cursor decided to move this one line, which temporarily disables recording the clipboard history, to a wrong helper function. Even for me, this sneaky one-liner was very hard to spot, and I learned my lesson about using AI and vibe coding. I do still think it has value, and vibe coding as such is not a total scam, but it's not a replacement for actually being good at coding. And speaking of being good at coding, this video is sponsored by Boot.dev. Boot.dev helps you learn programming by making it fun, engaging and something you'd actually want to do and come back to. It's structured like a massive multiplayer game where you earn XP by completing lessons, you compete with a massive community, there are leagues, boss fights and a leaderboard where you can literally see people completing lessons live. What I personally like is that each lesson requires you to write some code as well as tests. For example, I always wanted to learn Golang and I started following a lesson on how to build a web crawler. Because everyone knows the real money in AI is made in scraping. As someone with experience as a backend developer, I appreciate how you can just dive into an interesting topic headfirst and rely on your intuition and existing skills to pick up something new in a guided and fun way. Boot.dev have a custom CLI that will check and submit your solution for each lesson, which is A, very convenient and B, cool as heck. But if you're someone who is just starting out, there are complete courses on Python, Golang, Docker and Kubernetes, SQL, JavaScript and even low-level memory management in C. The lessons go deep and they are challenging, but you can, at the cost of some XP, take a peek at the solution. You can also get help from Boots, who is your AI personal coach. What's really cool is that it prioritizes teaching you instead of giving you the answers right away by asking you questions that help you arrive at 
the solution yourself. Boot.dev is really unlike anything else when it comes to learning how to code, and best of all, all lessons are free to read, so you only pay to access the interactive parts of each lesson. So check out the link in the description if you're curious to find out more. Okay, my daughter just woke up, so I had to go and get some breakfast and get her ready for a swim. But I decided to stay here and polish up this feature a little bit more. Anyhow, after having learned my lesson with Vibe Coding, I want to walk you through the process of adding a new feature to my app the old school way because I don't feel like breaking production all over again. So in short, the window manager feature of one menu this app that I'm working on is very customizable and powerful. Most recently, I worked on an auto layout feature which allows you to snap a window to one side and then automatically snap another one side by side. It's especially useful for situations where a window, such as Xcode for example, doesn't really fit on half the screen, so I can't use a predefined layout, but I still want to have a browser or something else to the side of it. Auto layout works great for such cases, but I think we can do even better. This is especially true when I want to have more than two windows arranged side by side, for example I want to bring up my terminal in the same area where the browser is so I can switch between them while having Xcode permanently on the left. So how can we do that? One feature that came to my mind as I was snorkeling yesterday was to allow the user to match the shape and size of an existing window that is already snapped to one of the sides. So I'll give you a tour of how this feature works in the code, I'll skip the parts of the code that have to do with Bitcoin mining and key logging. There is a running joke on the Discord server that my app is just a secret Bitcoin miner and a keylogger. And I will not confirm these allegations, but I will recommend joining the server. Here's how the new feature works in the code. I will share the screen directly to make sure it's nice and readable. I added a new keyboard shortcut called Match Snap Window Frame and a data migration to add a default value. I'm migrating from version 5 to version 7 because version 6 was also messed up by Claude. Then I have a function which, given the most recently pressed shortcuts, finds an appropriate action to take, and it does so through a cascade of functions sorted in order of priority. So I added this new function, which, and I am proud of this, doesn't introduce an entirely new action within one menu. Instead, it piggybacks on the following. One menu's window manager has a special feature where if you assign the same keyboard shortcut to multiple snapping areas, you can repeatedly press the shortcut to cycle through all of them. I use this for example to bind different sized columns to the right or left arrow plus control and option key. And the way this works in the code is with an action that is called window areas that holds the list of areas you can snap to and the current index of the area you're on right now. And so for this feature, instead of cycling through a list of predefined areas on the same key, I'm cycling through the list of window areas based on other windows that are actually on the screen. I was quite happy with how elegant this actually was, and this is part of the reason I had to work on this, even though I am on a vacation. It was convenient and satisfying. Plus, it's a very useful feature. For example, if I have a nice layout already set up like this, and I open up my terminal, I can just repeatedly hit Control space or some other shortcut that I can customize and make it align with what I already have. Satisfying. So that's the new feature and best of all, it's free. So if you're intrigued by this, by the time you're watching the video, it's already released, which you can also verify on the new changelog. I'm using a very simplistic architecture for my static site, including the changelog. And coming back to the topic of vibe coding, honestly, something like this is the perfect use case. There are no hidden control flows or edge cases that can break or crash your app. Yes, you can make the argument that had I had tests for this new Clipboard history feature, the production error could have been avoided. And that is true, and I will work on improving this on my side, but one thing I will not be doing is asking Claude to write those tests. Anyhow, this is all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and the little breakdown of how the new feature works. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, and if you're curious about learning to code, especially if you're interested in learning backend, check out boot.dev using the link in the description, and I will see you in the next one.